guys, Sid from Sid's Trains here, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. Let's see what I got going on the workbench. So it would be a lie if I told you I haven't really been working on very much. I always am working on something, and over the past couple days I've been working on this uh, Canadian Pacific 914 10-wheeler. Uh, it's actually a personal engine, and it's kind of in rough shape. I actually got it from somebody is uh, kind of a gift in a sense. Uh, they were tired of the engine, it was giving them troubles, and they just didn't want any more. Uh, so, uh, we worked out a deal, and I got the engine, and I've just been working on it slowly, and trying to get it restored. It wasn't in the best condition, and not everything was working, so I've slowly been working on it. But it's not really a project I want to show off, because the engine is just not something I feel is really good to show off. Uh, while While I like to show um, everything and the sides of everything and I don't want to just show you the good stuff. This engine just is not a very good engine to show off as it's just not a good basis to go off of. Uh, it's a very old design, uh, it's a very obscure engine and the design of it is definitely different from most so it's not something that I would uh, want to show you and kind of give you tips on. I'd rather show you a uh, a TMCC engine that has a very general platform that Lionel always used or something like that. This is an early early legacy engine and they're kind of complicated uh, because it was very or at this at this time is kind of obsolete technology and it just is not a good platform as I said uh, but that's kind of the engine I've been working on but I've been working on the layout. I'm getting track put down I'm ordering more track and getting switches in and I'm really looking forward to running trains again so something I have been working on is if I uh, put the camera down here is I've been working on track uh, this is uh, fast track of course and I've been working on fast track and you might be wondering well what does fast track have to do with your workbench well uh, let me talk about that so you might be wondering what does fast track have to do with your workbench well fast track has its issues the main issue is having electricity go through the rails uh, throughout the entire layout and specifically in these smaller pieces here this is a 4.5 inch uh, piece of fast track and there's also a 5 inch uh, those are the small uh, these are the smallest pieces of uh, fast track and these are the ones that have the issues mainly these two right here the issue is these uh, pins do not conduct the electricity very well and in some cases they will conduct the electricity but there will be a lot of resistance so much so that if you touch the center rail near one of the connections you will burn yourself this stuff can get really hot and in some cases I've had it melt the road bed which is really bad dangerous and is not good for running your train so I'm resolving that problem by soldering wires underneath my track and specifically on these pieces I've never had issues with the 30 inch sections the 10 inch sections or the curved track I've never had issues with those because they're larger sections and I feel they conduct the electricity better but these pieces seem to have issues so I'm only soldering these pieces together with wires so with the track flipped over, you can get a, a better look at the electrical setup and the tabs on the underneath of uh, these pieces of track. Uh, this one over here already has a wire because this is an insulation piece. Uh, if you see, there's this cut in the center rail, and that is what uh, is used to insulate the center rail. Uh, these are on switches, and they can also be used to insulate track sections, and specifically the center rail. Now... You can also see uh, where the rails connect to the roadbed here. There's these tabs. And these tabs are what I'm going to be soldering to. Over here, it might be hard if I bring it closer, you can uh, see better. There is a, a little bit of solder I've already put on this one because I've already experimented with this one before. And I'm only going to be soldering the center rails together because that's the only issue I've personally had. And that's the only issue I've really noticed is it's usually the hot or the power for the center rail that 
doesn't uh, conduct between the rails. I've never had issues with the outer rails or the ground connections as these pins are bigger so it's just more likely for them to conduct electricity plus I think it has something to do with the fact that these center pins can also sometimes bend uh, not be made out of a good um, material and overall it's just not the best design in the world so I'm personally only going to be soldering the center rails together because that's what I feel is only necessary. So a section that I would usually solder together is something like this. I would uh, be connecting a uh, four and a half inch piece. A, uh, I call it a four tie because it's four ties long and then a three tie. Obviously these have sizes. I think this is a one and three quarters and this is a one and three eighths. But I just call them by the ties. And this is a piece I would solder together. I then flip it over and I'm going to be soldering wires between here and here. And then of course if you have a... Um, three tie or a one and a three eighths inch piece you also need the wire that connects the two sections of that rail together so to start out I add solder to the tabs that I'm going to be connecting wires to in this case I'll be putting solder on these tabs here and then just connecting the wire to the tab that already has solder with this wire on it so I've actually found you don't need to use flux um, flux is a, is a su substance or material that looks kind of like this or you can find it in a liquid version and you usually put it on surfaces to allow the solder to adhere better and clean the surface uh, but I've found that you can just apply the solder directly to these tabs and after a little it'll just start to adhere to the tab. There we go. And see, I have a little drop on that tab there, and then I'll do this side as well. And then I will also be connecting a wire over to here, but since this tab already has solder on it, there's no need to add solder to that. And this is the wire I've been using. I just have a bunch of this old wire. It's probably like 20 gauge or so. It's just a uh, regular old copper braided wire and uh, it works well and I just cut it into little sections to solder in between uh, these joints and you see I already have a little bit there. And you just want to make sure it's a decent sized gauge. You don't want to use something uh, super thin but you also don't need to use something extremely thick because you want it to just sit under here and not stick out. And there's no, it's not, you don't really need it because obviously in some cases there's going to be a lot of power going through the rails but at the most you're usually going to have just 18 volts uh, so 20 gauge or maybe a little thicker 18 or 16 gauge will probably be fine now something I do is I take the wire and I strip the ends of it and I dip it in that flux so that when I uh, stick the wire and uh, heat the solder up it'll just adhere immediately to it so let me connect this first one here As you can see, you hear that popping, and immediately it adheres and is all connected. And we'll do the same for the other side. I just bend the wire around, I get it to the shape I want, and I stick it down to the solder. And with it connected, uh, there's some excess here, so I usually just push it down so it's below the road bed in this groove here and there we go so I zoomed in here so you can get a better look as you see these uh, this wire is connecting uh, the center pins now and now there's uh, no chance for that center pin to have any issues the rails are now connected and we will have power between these two rails no matter what and if that pin has any issues this wire will do the work of it and you don't need a solder between uh, both the tabs you just need to do from one to the other and uh, make sure if you're doing the center rail do not solder onto this plate here or these outside ones because these are the outside rails and you do not want the center rail power touching the outside that will create a short and blow the breaker on your transformer and if you don't have a breaker you could bl uh, blow the electronics inside your engine and you do not want that happening
and we'll do the same for over here. I'll add some, I'll add some solder. And connect a wire to the solder. And do the same thing on the other piece. And of course, I'll just press this wire down so it's down in that groove. And here we go. Uh, this section is all connected together, and I do not expect there to be any issues. Obviously, if you are having issues with your outside rail connections, you can run wires uh, between these tabs and these tabs. But personally, I've had no issues, so I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, but this is the technique that I use, and I think it works really well, and it looks very clean. Uh, so this piece of track is ready uh, to be put on the layout. And uh, now I'm going to show you some pictures of some other pieces that I've connected together. So that wraps it up for this Workbench Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, sometimes it's just the simple things uh, with layout work or trains in general uh, that kind of is interesting and gets the job done. Uh, you can't always be working on the electronics of the train or the crazy scenery on your layout. Sometimes you just have to do the basic work uh, to get things done. And this was one of the basic things that I have to do to get my layout working is just the simple soldering of wires between the center rail um, uh, tabs on the bottom of Fast Track. So I hope you guys enjoyed and stay tuned for the layout updates and more videos as more uh, content will be coming in the near future. Uh, so that's all I have and as always like, subscribe and click the bell for notifications, comment below and tell others about the channel. I'm Sid and I'll see you next time guys. Mm -hmm.